Hi right, guys, welcome back to the Hunt Collective on the Regal Gentleman YouTube channel. Uh, today, we are going to be looking at something a bit more classic. So we're going to be looking at doing a very nice classic pompadour today. Um, still a little bit of movement in it, but we're going to be aiming for something like this. So you can see it, we've got a very good head of hair to do this on. So uh, what we're going to focus on today is taking the back and sides nice and tight. Um, we're not going to do a skin fade, we're going to do maybe down to like number one we said. Yeah. Uh, and then maybe do an open five on the sides. But we want to be focusing on really the height uh, and the length on the top, blending into something that low and that short. Um, obviously working with a nice tape on the neck as well. Uh, very sharp, nice clean edges. We're going for a sharp look for this one. But I, I maybe still like to keep it so it's not too perfect. I, I love how it, how it is right now, with that kind of looseness in it. Obviously it needs a, it needs a trim and everything else, but that looseness in it, so it can kind of fall, is lovely. Um, so I think we'll play, we'll play a little bit of that as well. So what we'll do today is maybe use a, um, a texture razor in this one today as well to get a little bit, show you like how you can get some height and also quite a bit of movement in there as well. But focus on something that is quite classic. So I'm hoping to do something like maybe, um, you see on some of the old Rat Pack photos and stuff like that, you see like maybe a little bit of fringe falling down in his face slightly as well. So nothing too sort of like perfectly smooth, like flat top or anything like that. A little bit of movement so this can kind of fall down a little bit on his face as well. Um, so we'll give it a wash, condition, and then we'll, uh, we'll crack on. Right guys, so um, Russell's got a, um, oil-based pomade in his hair today. And we just spoke about kind of struggles to get out of his hair. So a little tip with that is before you wash your hair, do what we call a dry shampoo. So put a dollop of shampoo in your hand and work it into dry hair and emulsify it. So really work it through. Now it won't foam, it'll just start to break down the product. So this is what we, this is what we refer to as a dry shampoo. So this is anyone who comes in with like a very, maybe like your old classic, won't name any names, pomades or, uh, or old school products from the 60s or 70s, you know, that were very popular back then, um, that you can't get out, it's like almost like um, like cement almost, it's kind of just rock solid some of it. Just make sure you do a dry shampoo and just really work that through the fingers. Just try and work it all over the hair as well if you can. But mainly try and focus on where the product is. So at home it's so easy to do yourself, just remember when you get in the shower, maybe don't switch the shower on, just get the shampoo in your hands and then rub it through. So wait that through and then rinse it through. Just make sure the water again, nice and warm, nothing too cold, open up the, uh, the hair itself as well so then when you come to do a shampoo, the second shampoo it'll be much easier to get all the product out. There we go and then just come back onto your regular shampoo which you normally would. And as you can see that starts to foam up now. Yeah. And we start to just give it a bit more of a deeper cleanse. Yeah. Just make sure you work that into the hair as well. And rinse that off again. And just do one more for good luck. And after this shampoo, all that product should be out, or well, the majority of that product should be out. And you should be able to feel a bit of a kind of squeak when you run your fingers through your hair. That's kind of where the squeaky clean phase comes from. You feel it, feel that kind of squeak. That's when you know your hair is nice and clean, nice and cleansed. That's what you should feel. You should, you should hear yourself when you do it at home. You see that's now really fallen now. That product's all out. It's not sticking to it. It's not kind of feeling greasy or oily or anything like that. It's nice and cleansed. And then just always pop a little bit of conditioner on as well. Just because you've, you've shampooed quite a lot. Tem generally the, the, the rule is you take it out so you put back in. Just kind of, kind of think of it as like a face wash and a moisturizer with shampoo and conditioner. So you took oils out, product out, and you want to put that back in. So a little bit of conditioner. I just use this brush just to make sure I get it all the way through all the hair. Now when it comes to rinsing conditioner out, you want to use the water fairly like lukewarm, cool, and to close the cuticle, close the, close the hair itself to lock a bit more conditioner in. Um, so you want to be not rinsing out too much as well. You want to rinse out maybe like sort of like 60 to 70 percent of the conditioner. So what you do, more than being quite uh, vigorous as I was before, just run the water over it like that, and then that's it. So you're not looking to really scrub the or kind of really rinse that conditioner. You want to keep that in there, but also the cool water will start to close the hair and lock a bit more in as well. You hear that? I do. Yeah, I can feel it. Yeah, you can feel it. You can I, feel it. Yeah. You feel the squeak, can't you? It's, like, it's like a rubbery. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Does so that mean that's when your hair is nice and clean? You can almost feel that squeak in it. Yeah. Yeah. That means you've got all that product out of there now as well. Right. So on this one is I'm going to just start 
by looking at where the crown is. It doesn't really matter too much when you've got this much length on the top, because it's here, as you can see, it's, it's, uh, it's, got a, it's, it's kind of like a medium texture, medium thickness, not too thick, it's nice and straight. Um, so this will fall, as you can see, this has fallen quite easily back. If I do that, it's with a comb, it's not sticking up too much. So I know that's gonna sit really nicely back over the crown. So I just look where the crown is, just for purposes of my own when I'm sectioning. So I'm gonna start with my horseshoe section. Again, I'm right-handed, so I'm starting from the right. And I'm gonna take this up slightly diagonal to where the crown was. His crown sits pretty much flat smack bang in the middle of the back of his head. So it's quite easy to get it uniform either way. It's not like sitting too low on the right or too low on the left. You can have to manipulate your section. You can actually work this straight into almost to the crown. Just don't forget with the pomp or anything that's coming back, it's all got to blend through to the back here. So if it's up to too low, you might leave a little bit too much weight on the crown. Where I can manipulate this, this height through here to really start matching in from just below the crown, above the crown on the top as well. So I'm going to dry the sides off now and then start with the clipper wick. So I'm, I'm going to use my round brush to dry this off because I want to start drying this into shape when I'm cutting it. So I know what I'm trying to look for. I'm trying to keep a little bit of length through here, drop it down a touch towards the back to maintain a little bit of length through the crown. But I want to see how I can manipulate the hair because I want to try and maintain a bit of length through here. So I want to try and bring this hair back. So I want to try and manipulate it a little bit more and kind of almost cut it into the way we're going to wear it. So high speed, high heat. I'm just rolling this around the bush. I'm just trying to create a nice bit of height on the sides and a nice little bit of square shape through here. So I'm just rolling it around and then just bringing it down just to create that square. So I want to see how much length and how easy it is to manipulate his uh, muscles here. Right, so that's all nicely dried through for me. I've dried it in the kind of shape that I'm looking to create on the sides here now. So it's starting to sit in my mind, so the vision is exactly what we're looking for. Um, and it's also much easier to talk you through, talk through the, to the client as well about what you're going for um, once it's dried and in shape. So if I'm talking to us, I can say that's going to kind of keep a little bit of length through here, bring this through, and they get a nice fade in it. You can start to see the hair kind of sitting back a little bit. So I just find it's easier to kind of talk you through, even like kind of like almost like throughout the consultation as you're going through the haircut as well. So with that said, I'm gonna start on the clip away. So I'm going for a one with a low half on the edges, like, like, slightly, like, like a, a bit of a kind of taper fade, if you wanna call it that, and then nice and tight on the neck as well. So I get a really nice tight um, taper slash fade, whatever you wanna call it, on the neck as well today. So I'm gonna start as I always do with a two. The reason why I always start the two, because I've seen some of the, uh, some of the comments about why it's always a number two, is because it's, it's the guard that I can always blend into no matter what length. So if I go in with a number one, I might encounter, like say, a, a, a dip in the temple of Russell's, he uh, Russell's head that I maybe didn't feel or missed. You know, we're not, we're not, we're, you know, we're not perfect. We might miss these things if we're doing a shampoo where, say, you don't shampoo in your shop. Um, so I always start with a two because it's always the easiest one to blend in and it's also nice to blend into a two. Uh, that's the reason why I always start with two. A one or a half going straight in. You just caught, you're just kind of leaving yourself more room for error, I always find. At least with a two, you can, you know, you can slightly disguise, say like he's got like say a mole or something like that. You can always kind of disguise it with a two because you don't see scalp exposure. With that said, number two, and I'm gonna dip this down so it's gonna be higher at the sides and dip down slightly towards the back. So I'm gonna start quite low through here and I'll work down to my left side and then to my right side as well. I'm coming up and off where the occipital bone is right here. So I'm using that as my guide point. So I'm coming up and off the bone and the back. So one and a half, just a little bit lower down. And just use that and come up just before the number two comes off the head. I'm just using that motion of using the back of the the back of the clipper head and that uh, that shape there to use as my blend to come up and off. It makes it more seamless. Doesn't leave a line. It's quite nice for that nice uh, graduation into the number two. Just moving into my number one now and then I'm gonna come off where the one and a half started. As you can see, you get a nice graduation from a two into a one, very little effort, and um, you know, just saves you a lot of time during the haircut as well. So moving on to my 0.5, just gonna 
Literally just very small detail just through here and then blend it down into the beard. Just a little bit more sharpness to the uh, to the hip. Back onto my number one. I'm waking up into the one and a half. So now that's done, I'm gonna go into my taper on the neck. Now, like I said, I wanna do quite a nice, sharp, high taper to give that real, kind of classic look as well. So, I'm gonna put a line in with my zero and taper it out from that as well. I'm gonna go fairly high with this as well. So I'm looking, maybe dropping it just below bottom of the ear on that side. So this is a really good look for anyone who doesn't want a fade, you just want like a skim fade. Just doing a really high taper on the neck, it, 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 it adds the elements of scalp exposure, it adds the elements of skin in there. It just isn't all the way through the back and sides. Because I know a lot of guys don't really want to, it might be a bit too harsh for them, uh, a skin fade. But by doing this and going really short around the very bottom, especially when you see it from like, a, like say far away, you can see scalp and it's got a really nice graduation in it. So I think it's a, just a nice touch to go on to having something that, that shows a bit more scalp and goes down to the bone really. So that's my zero line. I'm just going to use my 0.5. Look off into the number one, and then just go down through the guard, and then just right, getting up close there as well. And the same, where can I just work from left to right, just to find it easier that way? It seems to flow better for me that way, there's no particular reason why. Now if you step away, Liam, this way, you see, you start to see that like really sharp tape and the kind of like the, 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 you can see the, where it's gone down to the wood. So I think that gives a really nice look for anyone again, like I said, who doesn't want to go for that skin fade, because you start to see that real sharpness down the bottom. Um, which I think is if someone does want to go for something that is a little bit sharper, just trying off something like this, it'll just give you a bit more of a kind of uh, bit of a, a more of a, say a sharper look in some ways, but without having to go all the way around the back and sides on a on a skin fade. So we'll start by blending this in now. So we lift them guide up. But I want to maintain still a little bit of hair through this, uh, the crown. So I want, I need to create this nice round shape. So square size, round shape at the back. So I'm angling my comb inwards to maintain. So elevation on it. Still some lifting it up above the section. And then I'm cutting it on this angle. So what I'm doing is maintaining length to kind of layer over it itself. So you see what I mean. As you see, I'm removing length. I'm starting to blend into my two. But I'm, I'm still maintaining a lot of length of that crown. Now coming up and up. Teeth are going to maintain a little bit more straight now because I'm looking to create that square effect on the sides. So more than angling over towards me, as you can see there isn't much length getting to this point here, so it wouldn't really work. So I'm going to start going a bit more straighter now. So that's the majority of the clip of work done. I'm going to go over with the scissors just to perfect it. But I'm going to start on with the, uh, the edge and the, the line out now of the, the hairline. I'm going to sharpen this off nice and tight around here. Especially when the hair is uh, slightly lighter, so more blonde, it's always a good idea to sort of strengthen it slightly more because it's, uh, it's quite weak because it's so light. So I think just putting a nice little bit of edging in there really, really sharpens it up. And gives that a little bit more detail. And again, we're looking for a nice smart look on this, so don't go too far into the hairline, we just try and create a little bit more strength to the hairline. And when it comes to where you had the zero, just use the mini clippers and go right up into that zero as well, just to get a little bit sharp. through the top now. This is a very, very simple way of doing it. Uh, it's so effective as well. This is why I do all, anything like this for my pumps. It's a, it's a very sort of simple, basic way of creating this really, really strong look. 
Okay. Bring it all the way back. And then pick up from the fringe and discuss with your clients how much you want to take off. So let's ask Russell how much you want off. So what are you thinking? How much would you like off the top? You happy with the length? Is it a bit too long? I know you mentioned before people have said like it doesn't even look like it needs a cup, but yeah. do you want to move a little bit off the top? Yeah, I think Just that's good. About yeah. that, yeah? Yep. Cool. So move about, say what's that? Quarter of an inch or so. So elevate it straight up and we'll clip this completely straight. Again, this isn't about texture on the top, this is about more shape and style it's gonna be dried into. Using my guide and just elevate my fingers straight up. So I elevate it straight up from the fringe as well. And just take a nice section through my fingers, very classic. Just cutting it nice and straight all the way through. Okay. Yeah. 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 through. Um, should we yeah. So I'm gonna bring this back over the crown, pick it up, and I'm gonna use that guy from the top section to that guy under here. I know it's gonna sit flat and connect it that way. Now that's my guy for when I start bringing it around this way. Now again, we're going for a nice square shape. So I'm not gonna angle this across to like follow the shape of his head. I'm gonna bring this from the fringe again, nice section. Follow my guide from the middle and cut it with my finger straight. There's my guide at the end of my finger. Again, we're not taking loads off. But there might be certain areas in a minute, which I take quite a bit off. I'll explain why. But just before where the crown was and the section was, and then connect this in. Just off the centre of parting, so you can see the guy from the previous section, from the middle. Pick this up, cut it nice and straight. Again, might not be much to take off. No, it's more. Even it up. And now, as you get to this section, we'll bring it down, find the guide, guide, guide. It cuts off, and as I bring it through into the middle, it's gonna match up. Just bring it all the way over from the side, and you cut through your fingers to the guide of where your blend was. See, not much coming through there. Bring it down. So it's cross. We'll separate that fringe off. And we we'll connect the side in. So follow the same guide. So what you'll see, you just see my guide through here. And then my guide from my fingers there as well. I'll cut this nice and straight. But what I'm doing, I'm bringing this down to the blend point. I'm not going straight off the head. I'm going to, to the blend point. Now what I'll do is I'll just match that through, make sure it's completely straight. And she with me connecting in the side, at the back, it all matches to that side. But I've, I've left the fringe long. But what you see is very blunt, like that. But as soon as you sweep this back, it all connects in nicely. Super simple, super effective. We've got the fringe last. But we're looking to maintain a bit more length in that fringe. So that'll sit in nicely back through there as well. Bring it all the way over, like that. Separate the fringe away, just a slight angle upwards, and then bring everything across to this side. Now, now it looks like I'm taking loads off, which I am, but it won't mean to it, it will create the shape. Don't be scared because I'm not cutting the fringe, this is just where the side part was. Cutting that through along there. But as you see, when you bring this back, it sits absolutely perfect. Like that. What we do is we just pick a length that we like. So I'm just going to bring it down, bring it right down through here. Not a lot off, we don't want to move too much length. And I'm just going to follow this round so we get an overhang with the other side. There we go. Then as I get to this section here, I bring my fingers out and I'm not going to cut it completely into the blend, I'm just going to cut it on a slight angle, just through there so it dips through. And that will just help and it sits back to maintain a lot of length but you'll still see that separation of the fringe that can hang down a little bit but still remove a little bit of length it's not going to be really long through the side just by cutting on that corner there on that angle so it falls nicely if it needs to like that it's got a slight angle so it dips down on that sharp angle through there and that way you maintain all that length through the fringe and the pump a lot of movement but you've still got a lovely connection through the sides as well now i'm going to use a texture razor this is for the finishing touches really this side a little bit of texture a little bit of movement through it but also helps to smooth off the blend as well so i'm looking for a little bit of height a little bit of looseness through this 
So mainly through the fringe. So what we'll do, we'll do a nice big section, this is straight across the head. And we're working smaller sections as we get to the front. So I'm gonna pick it up like this, from the back to the front. And I'm gonna use this just a little bit above and just slide through here. And then do a couple of long slices up here as well. So that adds height, movement, lift, and just helps to add a little bit more control as well. It's almost like thinning it out without putting a blunt uh, scissor through it almost. Because any, any piece of, what I always say by blunt scissor, what I mean by that is, anytime you use a scissor, it's always two pieces of metal cutting together. So it's always gonna leave a blunt edge at some point. Whereas when you're using a single blade, it's gonna be a lot more serrated, a lot more natural way of texturizing. A good thing with this blade as well, to smooth off the sides, is you put your comb in, and you run your blade across it like that, and that helps to smooth off the blend. So in case it caps off any of the hair that's coming through you. So you see this coming off, it's just helping to sit a bit smoother. Again, this is really good. If you want to help the crown sit flatter, so you can wear it through and just skim off the hair that is going to be unruly. And this helps to keep that nice smoothness through the blend. There's another way you can use it if you want to create texture in a blend. You can blend in by working razor over comb and working through this to really shatter that blend. So it's not going to be too perfect. It's got a little bit of movement in there as well. That's probably better for anything with more texture, a bit of movement in the haircuts, like mine or uh, so some of the previous videos we've done. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to run the razor through the hair like this. So I want to create a little bit of movement this way. Then run the hair really through this way and really break that hair up. That just had a lot more, a little bit of texture to this hair because it can fall a bit looser. Again, I want to make this slightly versatile for Russell as well. So, that's the haircut done. I'll dry it into shape and then we'll style it through. Right, so, using a little bit of the Regal Gentleman Salt Spray, spray this into the hair just for the base. This is really good to blow dry with. And I'm using this purely for like a kind of base product when I dry it through. So I'm gonna use my hairdryer, medium heat, high speed, and the round brush. And I'm gonna dry it in sections through. So I'm gonna start at the back and then work from the side, side to the middle, the other side, and then work to the front last. I'll explain what I mean when I'm doing it. The round brush to create this nice round shape. So we can just pass the crown. Now we're through the sides. We're going to push this back, comb it over loosely, and we'll start drying this in small sections. Sections don't need to be perfect. It's just all about drying the shape in. We're going to start bringing this back as well. I'm going to use my fingers just to break it up. And another section as well, a bit higher up. Now what I'm left with, if you look through the top, is I'm left with kind of like a mohawk, should we say. And what I do is I work that back from the back to the front and leave the fringe out because I use a different brush for the fringe. So you just bring it over and roll this back. You can see how nice that's sitting through. It's all sitting in place. Just before the fringe. Now, as you can see, that shape that's coming through here now starts to get a bit more height, starts to get a bit flatter through here. I'm going to move on to a vent brush. So this one, because I want to create more looseness to the fringe. So I want the shape coming through with the round brush and the vent brush to create that bit more looser fringe on the pump. I dry it straight up. I dry it into the middle, onto itself. I break up the growth pattern at the fringe. And wrap it around my brush, left to right, right to left. And I think it's nice for the height, but it allows a bit of movement in there as well, so I can fall 
quite nice here as well. We've got a nice bit of height in there too. All right, finish off on cold air, just to set the style. So that's all blow dried in that. I know it looks quite complicated, but it does get easier the more you practice, obviously. Um, another way you can do this as well, if you've got a round brush or a bed brush, you can just blow dry it back as well if it's easier. Another good thing as well, so Russell's brought his own product in. Now, I've, this has happened quite a lot because I, I only use what, what my own product, but some guys like their own product as well. So I don't think there's anything wrong. And I don't, it doesn't bother me at all when the guys bring in their, their own product. Now, I know this brand really well. I, I really love this brand as well. Um, and this is the look that he wants. I'd rather Russell or your client bring in the product they want to use because in that way they're going to be super happy with what you've done because then they can see the exact finished look. Please, I don't think it's a problem taking your own product and I think it's a really good idea to do. So I'm going to use a little bit of the Rusal for you. Now this is the green one. This is the oil-based uh, pomade. Now the way I do this is I get a bit on my hand and I also layer this in as well. So I put a bit on the back. Now a lot of guys use it very different ways but this is how I tend to find it works the best. So what I'll do is work it through my hands and see it's really super shiny. And I start sort of layering this in, like I said. So you start at the back and just work it through your fingers through here, left to right, so you get it right in there and then down the way you want it to go. Now again, a little bit more off the back of your hand, work it through the middle of the hair now. A bit more, working it through, leaving the fringe out, working this through now. And then finally, whatever you've got left, quite enough in my hand already, and I'll work it through the fringe. And that way you're layering this product in. So pomade is always best kind of layered in, otherwise it just sits on top of the hair, quite heavy. Where when you layer it in, it sits a little bit easier as well. Now let's go for something a little bit loose. So maybe I'll use uh, two, let's say like a small, so the fine, quite, quite fine tooth comb, get this side sitting nice and sharp. Same this side. Bring it back. Now the way you do this, you want to catch the hairs from falling out. If you run the comb through this, it'll sit flat, but you want to catch the flyaway hairs. So you use your hand. So you may have seen it in old movies when they kind of run the hands through behind the comb. That's going to smooth out the hair. So we'll work that through. Let's bring this into a bit of a DA at the back slightly. Bringing this in through here. So a bit more of an old school finish through the back. And then using your comb, you can use it strands to get that nice loose finish. You can always let that kind of fall down slightly as well so it looks a bit more old school. So you've got a nice sort of classic pump. Maybe put a slight little part in there if you want to. Well, the way cutting it in this way, you've balanced both sides. So you want a part, you can put a part in there if you want. So you can break it through. Bring the part in there if you like. Just have a little bit more of a classic edge to it. Like that. A nice classic finish. Height in there. And a nice smoothness through the back as well. And this is very much about how you dress your own hair. You can spend as little as long as you want on it. I just thought I'd have something like that, quite nice. And just use your fingers to smooth it off. And that, guys, is my interpretation of a nice classic pompadour. That's really good. It's very versatile, mate. You know what I mean? I've said about the part one before. It doesn't need to be cut into one. You yeah. create one if you want, you know what I mean? But you can also have that swept back as well. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? So you can, it is very versatile. Happy? Happy. Very awesome. happy. <laughs> I like that. Brilliant. And for anyone looking to get it done? So anyone looking to get this look is a um, is a one back in sides, um, quite low towards the back, quite high on, uh, on, on the temple here. And then we're looking for essentially um, a very, this is a very classic barber's haircut, I suppose. Um, this is you know, old school, should we say. Um, again, you're just looking for a lot more height through here and keeping the corners down here. So it's, um, it's a working through all, all horizontal sections. So straight across here and also bringing it down here as well. Um, but again, you ask for a rockabilly. Most barbers know what that is, but uh, it's, it's quite a quite a common haircut now. What you're basically essentially looking for um, is a very old school kind of short on the top, slightly longer in the corners, and then sweeping everything back. So whatever point that will sweep back at, your barber will know. But essentially, it's quite fairly long in the fringe, short towards the crown, and a bit longer through the corners here, just so that you can sit back a bit easier. Thank you.